Hi, me again. And today's video is another one on Excel. This one's on Power Query, and it can be directly translated across into Power BI as well. Now, the problem we've had in the past is actually trying to get a query to work on a dynamic file path or folder path. And what we quite often want to do is we want to open up and load our query or run the query on all of the files within a specific folder. But then we might want to copy and paste the query into another folder. Um, a classic example of this is if you write the query on your machine as a developer and you then transfer it to someone else, the user's machine, for them to run, um, it's actually quite intimidating to get them to try and physically change the file path um, or for you to go to their machine, have access to their machine, for you to be able to do it actually physically on their machine. And I will show you in a minute some of the reasons why you need to do this. So let's first of all have a look at one of these folders. So let's just go into that folder there, the first one. And this, I've just called it transaction by year 2015 to 18. And you'll notice that I have my test file in there as well. That's the file I've got open in Excel down here. Um, so we'll have a look at that file in a moment. But let's first of all have a look at the path itself. So if I just click there, you'll see the path coming up. Now this actually has picked up users and then my username for this particular computer. Now, if I was working on a, a roaming desktop profile, um, then that's fine because that would be my enterprise login. But if I were working on a non-enterprise roaming profile, that would change depending on which physical machine I was logged in on. So the machine's name rather than my name. Um, equally, if I transferred this to another person, that would come up with their username. Now, some systems actually pick up the IP address of the computer that you're working on and put that in some of the path. Now, that's no use for me to hard code that path into my query because it won't work in any of those other situations. Now, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just simply use a universal path? Well, you can. Uh, but again, like I say, some systems have security settings that actually put in the path the IP of the computer that's used the taxing it at the time. So I could physically go to every single machine where this query is going to be run and change or update the file path. But what I want is something dynamic. So something that the machine actually looks and it looks at this file here and it says, what file path or what folder path are you in? And then it uses that path to start the query. OK, so that's basically what we want to do. And if I just look at this other folder here, this is my 2019 2020 and I don't have the, the query or the Excel query in here. I will copy and paste it in later on and we'll refresh it and just check how it works just to make sure that it does. Now, let's have a look at the actual um, Excel sheet that I've got itself. So this is the report file test. This is the file that I'm going to copy in. And you may notice it's saved as XLSM which supports macros. And the reason is because there are a couple of ways of doing what I'm about to show you. Now, the way that I've chosen is the non-macro way, um, but the, the macro way or the, the VBA way um, would be to uh, run some code on uh, opening. So if I just do Alt F11 and I come into the workbook as an object and I come here to workbook objects and on opening the workbook, um, I could say let a certain cell equal the current path. I've done it a different way by typing in a just some a function in here or a combination of functions, nested functions, um, which actually pick up the current file path. Now it looks slightly convoluted, um, but if I break this down into sections, the first section is this cell file name. Now if I go into another cell down here and I just say equals cell, you'll see I get a load of options for information about a cell. Now what I'm going to do is say the file name, choose that as the option. Now the next bit where it's just said A1, it doesn't actually matter because all the cells on this sheet are going to have the same uh, file path. So all I could do is just type in uh, A1 in there. And that's it. So that now gives me the file path of cell A1, in fact, of every single cell on this sheet. Now, what it's doing is 
I don't want all of that. I don't actually want anything beyond that first square bracket. So I actually just want the file path itself because I'm going to look at the folder that this file is in. So I need the file path and I need that last backslash there before I end up with the square brackets which are around the file name. So what I'm going to do, the rest of that function basically says find the first right hand or left hand square bracket and then in that there, that cell, I could have actually referred to this bit here if I had that in another cell like I have here. Um, starting at character one and then minus one. So that basically gives me a number of characters from the very start of the string all the way up to not including that first square bracket. And then the last part of this function just says the left of that cell, in other words, of all of that, by how many characters up to and not including that first bracket. So basically what it does, it gives me my path, including that last backslash, which is important. Um, okay, now, now that I've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my table, and it's got to be in a table, and I've set this up as a table and I've called it parameters. Now, how I've named this and how I named these things are important later on when I actually come to write the parameter uh, query or to define the parameters in a query. Um, I've put parameters with an S, and down here I've put parameter without an S as the column header. Here I've got value as the value of the parameter. So the parameter itself, the first one I've put file path, and again it's important that you, you check how you spell these, so I've spelt them without any spaces. Um, that's just habit. I've seen a very similar uh, set up to this on the internet with its with spaces. It does make a difference if you put spaces or not. If you don't put spaces in mine, um, then you must make sure when you're using the, the commands that you have them without spaces. I've also put in a start date, um, and actually what that is is today's date. So it's just the machine, every time it runs or updates the calculations, it's going to look for the date in the corner of my screen and it's going to return that value in there as the date. Now what it means is I can then do some calculations on this. So if I wanted to find out um, uh, what my running total to month is, uh, year to month or year to date, um, I can basically use today's date and then say uh, year to date based upon today uh, because I've got a start date in here. Now yes I could do that in the query as well. This is just an example of another uh, parameter that you could set up. Okay, now how are we going to actually use this? Well, we need to use it in a query. Now we need to build two types of queries. The first one is to define parameters. And the reason we do this is because that query is actually accessing external data. This, and I mean external to the query. In other words, it's on another sheet. Um, the second query is actually how we get from folder and use that first query to get the file path. Now this is quite important. So I'm going to go into my data and queries. And I've got two queries in here. Let me just shrink them down so we don't have to see them all. And the two queries that we're interested in are these ones are get. So I put in a function get parameter. And here I've got fault report files, which is what my, my sales would be. So in here, if I right click and then say edit, um, you'll notice when you first come into this, it, it might not make any sense. And I'll talk about how we set this up in a moment. Um, if I go into the advanced editor, you'll actually see the code. Now, I'm going to leave this up on the screen for a moment whilst I'm talking. Um, if you want to copy this code, um, by all means, copy and paste it um, or write it down. Or if you get stuck, send me an email and I will send you through a copy of text file with this code in it. Um, clearly, you have to name things consistently. So here, what I'm saying is uh, parameter name is text. And I want to let my parameter source, which is that actual table back in Excel, is Excel current workbook, which is the current workbook that I'm running the query from. And it's a name. So the name is parameters. Now that's the name of the table. And I want the content. I don't actually want the cell reference or anything like that. Um, now, parameter row, 
in other words, the, the data for the parameter, is a table, the rows from parameter source, which is the table I've just specified up there. And for each parameter, not parameters, but parameter, which means for each item in the column parameter, parameter name. That gives the parameter a name. Um, if the row in the table is empty, then don't bother returning a parameter. Just put it in as a null parameter. In other words, if I did have the name of a parameter in my uh, left-hand column, but didn't have any values in the right-hand column, it would put in a null value for them. It wouldn't throw an error. Um, otherwise, choose uh, the value field as the value of a parameter. And that equals value. OK, so I click done on that. I'm just going to close and load there. Now, basically, how you'd get to there in the first place is just say get data from other sources from a blank query. And as soon as you get this blank query up, all you need to do is go into the advanced editor and then simply type in or copy and paste to replace whatever code is in there with the code I just showed you on the previous screen. Um, what that will do is that will define a, uh, a query for you, and it will define some parameters. So what you'll see here is get parameters. And when you go close and load, because you've said it's a parameter, you're not going to get the close and load to option. You'll just get close and load, and it will just come up with connection only. If you're running an older version, you have to choose... Um, uh, close and load to create connection and it will then come up here saying not loaded okay once we've got that we need to then run the query and the query is to get all of the files from that location in other words my current file path the way we do that is if I again right click on here and go into edit uh, this query that I've already written um, I'll just go back to the, the very first part because that's the important bit. And this is the source. Now, what you can do is you can go into here and just create a new query. And you say get data from file from folder. And then just basically close and load, create connection. And then come back in. And what you need to do is where I've got a function get parameter file path. Basically, instead of having the folder dot files open brackets and the actual file path that you hard coded you're replacing that with our first parameter which is the file path parameter now notice i said that this has to be without the space um, it does make it easier if you type it without the spaces just if you're going to be using something in code you shouldn't have spaces in there Okay, all I've done then is I've just lowercased my extensions. I've just chosen the CSV extensions, and I've said I only want the ones that start with the name, with uh, the, the start with two, or the name starts with a two. Um, I'll just demonstrate why. So if I go back into the source, these are all of the files in that folder, including the file that I'm working from, and this hidden one, which is actually the, the file that tells the machine that somebody has this file open. Now, I don't need to see all of them, so my next line of code says take the extension and transform them all so they all appear to be lowercase. So if somebody does feed in an uppercase CSV, those are still going to be selected. My filtering rows only selects the ones that are CSV, and I've done that by simply clicking on there, putting on a text filter and say equals, and I chose CSV. I can cancel that one. Um, my last row there is saying, okay, there's my filtered rows. There's another filtered rows. I'm saying also here, even if they're CSVs, it needs to be the ones that begin with a two. In other words, I want the ones that start off with the year rather than with something else like a master, like an original, something like that. Okay, so once I've got that, I can close and load. And again, I just loaded that as a query, not loaded into my report anywhere. Now, let's save this file. And save the file, and that's fine. I'm now just going to close that file down. And I'll just minimize Excel. Now, you notice that I do not have the same file in here. But if I go back to this first one, 
I can now copy this file and paste it across into here. And because I've set it up as dynamic, it should now interrogate this folder, not the other one. So this should be giving me dates from 19 and 20 rather than the previous. So if I now simply just open this straight away from here, now this is simulating me having emailed this to someone else, and the file is now on their machine looking at their path. Obviously, I'm going to enable the content. Straight away, you can see the file path on here is the 1920 whereas the previous one had been the 15 to 18. And if I now go into my uh, data and connections, yeah, I've got all of them. Let me just have a look at that one. If I go into the connection only, that will look exactly the same. But if I go into this one, you'll notice straight away, it's only giving me the two files, which are from 19 and 20. So what that's telling me is that my, my code is working. My parameters have been recognized and I'm able to use a parameter as the path for a folder for me to then interrogate. OK, um, in a nutshell, that's how you do it. You do need to set up a table. Um, it does need to be a, a, a proper Excel table and it does need to have a name like all tables should have. You also need to be careful naming the headers or the, uh, uh, the column names. And you need to be careful when you're in your parameters of what you're calling the parameters themselves. Uh, this was just an incidental. This was the code that I used there left of the, the cell file name uh, minus all the stuff at the end after the, and including the square brackets. Um, the other way of doing that, like I said, is just by running a macro, but you do need to populate that cell to the right of this one, and it does need to still all be set up in a table with proper names for this to work. Okay, I hope somebody's found that useful. Like I say, if you do uh, need to get in touch with me, if you do want to get hold of uh, a text file with the, the actual code in it, either for doing the parameters or for doing the query itself, um, the M code is very, very easy to copy and paste in just using the advanced editor. Um, if you want that, just make a comment down below. Let me know your email and I will send it over to you. Okay, once more, thank you for listening.